A beautiful girl named Kara stays with her friend Jess in her house. But Jess wakes up to find that Kara is awake and waiting for her to wake up. We know that Jess' family is traveling, and she asked Kara to come because Jess is afraid to be alone. The two girls intend to spend the day at a famous lake in the city, and they eat breakfast quickly to spend all day in the lake. Kara then calls her mother Deborah to tell her that they are going to the lake, and that she'll come home around 10 o'clock at night. Deborah asks her daughter if her boyfriend Ryan will be with them, but Kara says that he can't because he has a special training plan. It seems that Kara's parents are divorced, and she is currently living with her mother. But Kara goes every once in a while to visit her father and stay with him. Then, Deborah tells her daughter not to worry if she comes home at night and doesn't find her, because she will go out to meet her new boyfriend. After this, Kara ends the call with her mother. But Jess asks her to water the plants in the garden, until she has a shower. By the way, the area where Jess lives is so quiet, and there are only a few people on the streets. While Kara is standing to water the plants, a black car appears. And the driver keeps around the house as if watching her. Suddenly, the man gets out of the car, then goes to talk to Kara, and asks if her family is at home. But Kara tells him that this isn't her house, and it's her friend's house, but her family isn't here. So, the man asks her to hold his books for one minute. But she is surprised that he has a gun, and forces her to get in the car or he would kill her immediately without any hesitation. Although Kara is terrified, she agrees to get in the car with him because there is no other choice. The man has a box inside the car and forces her to enter it. And he locks the box, so no one can see her while driving. Shortly after, they reach a deserted area. And the man tells Kara that he'll tie her up, so she can't move or make any sound until they arrive. Then, he leaves her and goes to get the tools from the car's trunk. At this moment, Kara is thinking of escaping, but she imagines that if she runs away, he will kill her without hesitation. So, Kara decides to stay at her place. The man ties her and closes her mouth, then drives the car. Meanwhile, Jess comes out of the bathroom and keeps looking for Kara in the whole house. But she is surprised that she isn't there and gets really worried. She decides to call Kara's mother and asks her if Kara talked to her. But Jess is surprised that Deborah doesn't know anything about Kara after that morning call. Deborah is worried when she knows that her daughter has disappeared. So, she quickly talks to Ryan, Kara's boyfriend, but finds that the last thing he knows is that Kara was at her friend Jess's house. Then, Deborah goes to Jess's house. And from there, she calls Kara's father, whose name is Ron. But he says he also doesn't know anything about Kara. Ron lives about five hours away from them, but he reassures Deborah that he will come to them as soon as possible. After the call, Deborah calls the police and tells them everything that happened. However, the investigator sees that the matter is simple. He says that teenagers' behavior is always irresponsible and that they do many things without thinking or taking permission from their parents. He guesses that Kara went to a friend of hers or it is possible that she was upset and ran away from home but says they will interrogate the neighbors, maybe one of them saw something. Deborah objects to this because her daughter is a responsible person and even if Kara goes out without telling her, he should pay more attention to the matter and start searching for her. The investigator advises her to go and wait at home, as it is possible that Kara is trying to call her. Then, he leaves her and walks away. At this time, Kara arrives with the man at his home. He takes her to the bedroom, and begins to tell her his rules. The most important rule is, that she has to call him father. And she must ask his permission before doing anything, no matter how simple. He threatens her that he will remain holding his gun all the time, if she tries to run away or do anything. Kara is so terrified of him, that she doesn't even respond to him. But he forces her to answer his questions, and asks about all the details of her life, such as her name, the name of her parents, and so on. It turns out that he doesn't know any Anything about her, and randomly kidnapped her. He then orders her to sleep on the bed, and starts raping her. Shortly after, he comes out to sit on the sofa, and forces her to sit next to him. He starts talking to her, then asks her about her school and more details about her life. At this time, Kara decides to get to know him more, and gather as much information as possible, as this may help her escape. So, she tries to pretend that she feels comfortable with him. Kara begins to ask him about his life, where he comes from, and the name of the school he attended. He tells her that he didn't attend college, because it was too expensive for him. But he joined the army, 
and spent nine years of his life in it. Then, Kara notices that he has many animals, such as fish and parrots. He lets her go to watch them, and says he loves the gray parrot the most. The man notices that she is afraid, but reassures her that he won't kill her. But as soon as he gets bored of her, he will allow her to leave. Then, he threatens her that if she thinks of reporting him, he will hurt her. And people will keep seeing her as the girl who was raped all her life. After a while, Kara asks him to enter the bathroom, and hopes that she will find a window there to escape from it. But the man forces her to leave the door open, so that he can watch her. He then takes her to eat, but Kara tells him she isn't hungry. So, the man says if she refuses to eat, she will be breaking his rules, and has to do something in return to forgive her. Then, he decides to make her sweep the floor while he is eating. Meanwhile, Kara is trying to check everything around her, to collect as much information as possible about him. It seems that this man suffers from something, because Kara sees some of the doctor's addresses. She also knows that there is a woman who lives with him, but she traveled. Then, the man takes Kara to watch the news, but laughs when he finds that no one is talking about her disappearance, and says that it seems her family doesn't care about her in the first place. But Kara realizes that he is trying to make her sad with his words, and doesn't respond to him. Meanwhile, the man wants to talk on the phone, so he puts Kara in the box, so that she can't make any sound, or ask for help from anyone. As soon as he ends the call, he comes back to her, but finds her terrified and crying, so he tries to reassure her. He says that he has been suffering from anxiety for a long time in his life. So, he gives her some of his medicine for her to take and calm down. Then, it's time for bed. And the man decides to tie her to the bed, so that she won't be able to move or do anything while he is asleep. He also sleeps next to her on the same bed. And because of her tiredness, Kara falls asleep immediately. Meanwhile, Deborah begins to call all the people she knows to ask them if anyone has contacted Kara or knows her place. And when she can't find anything, she decides to meet the head of the police station, whose name is Dale. There, she complains to the investigator that he doesn't care about her daughter's case. Deborah says that she spoke with all the neighbors, and one of them saw a black car approaching the house. But she says none of her daughter's friends owns a black car. Dale laughs and says that she certainly doesn't know all of her daughter's friends, and tells her every teenager has secrets that he hides from his family. But Deborah is sure that her daughter is in danger, and this is because she has never been away for these hours without reassuring them. But Dale reassures her that he'll talk to the investigator to take more care of the matter. The next morning, Kara wakes up early to discover that the man is still asleep, and knows that this is her only chance to escape. Kara tries to untie herself, and she succeeds in doing so in a short time. Then, she pulls towards the door of the apartment, and goes out running. And by chance, she sees a car passing in front of her with two men. So, she tells them, that she was kidnapped, and begs them to take her to the nearest police station. They agree and allow her to ride with them. Then, Kara notices that all the houses in this area are similar to each other. She points them to the man's house, and asks them to remember it if the police need it. Kara arrives at the police station, and there she meets an investigator named Roland. She tells him what happened, so Roland tries to calm her down, and takes her to his office to get all the details from her. Roland orders his assistant to search for Kara's name, and find out if there was a report of her disappearance or not. Also, he orders him to see the people who brought her and take their statements. Another investigator called Bonnie enters, and she talks to the men who brought Kara here, to find out from them the address where they found Kara, but they don't remember the house number of this man. Meanwhile, Kara tells Roland all that happened, but Bonnie intervenes and says that she contacted the nearby police stations, and knows that Kara's mother reported her disappearance about 18 hours ago. Roland calls her mother to reassure her, and gives Kara the phone to reassure herself. But Deborah collapses when she hears her daughter's voice, and promises that she'll come to take her immediately. Then, Bonnie says that the two men don't remember the house number. So, she suggests to take Kara and go to check this area to recognize the house. Kara agrees and goes with them. And there, she tries to remember any distinctive sign in the shape of the house from outside. But she can't. Then, they find a worker who works in the area. And they get out of the car to talk to him. Clara tells him the man's details, and they ask him if he knows someone who lives here with these details. But he says that these are normal details, and many people have them. At this time, 
Kara says that this man covers all his windows, and that he hangs a painting over the bed in the shape of a bear. He also has different kinds of animals in large numbers. Because of what she said, the worker can guess who is the man, and tells them the house number. So the officer asks for backup cars from the police to break into the house. As for Roland, he takes Kara to the police station because it will be more safe for her. Shortly after, Deborah arrives at the police and hugs her daughter. Meanwhile, the police station's head, named Jim, arrives at the house with substantial backup. And they break into the house, but finds it empty. They find the house with the same details that Kara said, so they make sure that this is really his house. Jim orders them to search the surrounding area, and also interrogate Kara to try to find out more details from her, while she and her mother are in the police station. Bonnie goes to talk to Kara, and shows her pictures of all the residents of this neighborhood. Without any effort, Kara recognizes the man who kidnapped her, and makes sure that he is the owner of the house that they stormed a short while ago. By the way, his name is Richard, and he has disappeared from the whole area. Bonnie begins to interrogate Kara, and is surprised when she finds out that Kara knows a lot of information about the man. Kara gives so accurate details, such as the addresses of his doctors and their phone numbers, and says that she saw him opening a box next to the animal corner. But he felt nervous when he found her looking at him, and quickly hid this box. Bonnie thanks her for all the information, and tells her that two nurses will come to check on her. During this time, Deborah hears them while she is collapsed, especially since no one tells her exactly what this man did to her daughter. She breaks down even more when she knows that he escaped, and feels that her daughter is still in danger. Meanwhile, the police start searching for the box Kara told them about, and when they find it, they find it full of underwear belonging to girls other than Kara. They also find the headlines of articles about the disappeared daughters, and conclude that Richard is a serial killer and that he keeps any news of his victims. But all of this is just suspicion, and they are still not sure of it. Jim orders to communicate with the police departments that were responsible for these girls' cases to know everything about them. Then, they post Richard's photo everywhere, and ask people to report him if they see him. The next day, Jim asks to meet Dale, the chief of the police station who is informed of Kara's disappearance, so he can gather as much information as possible. Jim tells him information about three girls who disappeared before and found their names at Richard's house. But they are still missing, and their bodies haven't been found. He says that Richard was kidnapping his victims and raping them until he got bored of them, then drowning them in the bathtub and throwing their corpses in any swamp. And when the police found these bodies, they couldn't know who did this. But they make sure that they are dealing with a serial killer. While they are talking, Bonnie enters and says that she investigated Richard, and manages to reach his wife Ashley and his sister Stephanie. But she will come to say her statements the next day. Meanwhile, Kara finishes her medical examination and prepares to go out, and everyone waits to see her, because they are very worried about her, but they're surprised that she is strong, despite all that she had gone through. On the way, Deborah tries to know from her daughter what happened, but Kara refuses to tell her anything, and begs her to stop asking her questions. A few hours later, Jess goes to sit with Kara in her room, so she won't leave her alone. At this time, she refuses to ask for any details, and guesses that Kara doesn't want to talk about it, but Kara decides to tell her everything that happened, because she is her best friend, and they trust each other so much. Then, Jess feels sorry for her when she hears this terrifying story. The next day, the police investigate Richard's wife, but she is shocked by what she hears, and sees that Richard is a good person and can't do that. Then, they investigate his sister Stephanie, who appears to have been suspicious of his behavior, but she doesn't imagine that he'll do that and become a serial killer. She says that Richard spoke to her yesterday, and that he is currently staying in a hotel near them. So, the forces go to arrest him, but they find nothing there. At the police station, they know that Richard used his phone, and through it, they can know his location. They find that he is close to his second sister's house, then call her. She says that he actually spoke to her, and asked to meet her after two hours in a faraway place. They know his place, and go quickly to arrest him. At the same time, Kara decides to leave the house for the first time after what happened. She knows that Ryan has a match, so she decides to take Jess and go there. And it appears that the police have appointed people to stay by her side wherever she goes. This is because as long as Richard is free, she will remain in danger. Although her mother tries to prevent her from leaving, 
Kara refuses and goes out. There, Kara tries to ignore people's looks at her and enjoys the match. Meanwhile, the police find Richard and start chasing him until he finds that they have surrounded him. So, Richard grabs the gun and commits suicide. The next day, Deborah feels happy because she knows that the person who harmed her daughter died and will not pose a threat to them. But as soon as Kara knows, she collapses. Then, she finds that they knew from yesterday and no one tried to tell her because they are treating her like a child. Kara gets upset, and then leaves her mother, and goes out to sit alone in front of the house. Then, she is surprised that Jim comes for her. Kara says that she wants to stand before Richard in court, and sees him punished for his actions. But Jim sympathizes with her, and is very proud of her. He says sorry that they didn't inform her of his death earlier, and tells her that she is the bravest girl he has ever met in his life. And because of her, the world ended from Richard's evil, and she saved many other girls, who might be his victims one day. After that, Kara asks Jim not to tell her family about what Richard did to her, and that she is worried about them from the shock. Jim respects her decision, and promises not to tell them anything. Then, Kara goes to say sorry to her mother for shouting at her, and asks her to get over it, because they really can't change what happened in the past. Deborah says sorry that she is pressuring her, and promises her that she'll let her do whatever she wants. She decides to see the positive side, which is that her daughter is still alive, and she managed to survive from everything that happened. By the way, it's a true story. And a few years later, Kara decides to work as an investigator, specializing in these assault cases. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video.